Hello and welcome to Talk to Cisco, a live social broadcast that puts you directly in touch with Cisco leaders. Today we are talking security. We are live in San Francisco where the RSA conference is well underway and I am pleased to have Tom Gillis right here next to me, VP and GM of the Security Technology Business Unit at Cisco and sitting right next to him, Chris Hoff, Director of Cloud and Virtualization Solutions at Cisco as well. So dynamic duo with us for this uh, half keeping hour. Keeping safe. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Keeping us safe. Um, we truly are privileged to have um, and just excited to have you both here with us uh, for this half hour broadcast. Uh, before we get started, just a note about how you, the viewers, can participate in this, this discussion. And we truly do look to you to send us questions. That is what drives this conversation. So you'll see on the right-hand side of your screen, there is a social stream. You can log into your Twitter account. Facebook, and go ahead and send us a comment or post a tweet, and we'll look at those questions and ask them directly to our Cisco leaders. If you feel more comfortable sending us an email, feel free to do so at talktocisco at cisco.com. So without further ado, let's get this conversation going. It's a half hour only. Uh, we've got two experts with us, so you can imagine it's going to be a packed 30 minutes. Um, before we take our first question, I do want to put this one out there, and this has to do with the news that was announced today at RSA mm -hmm. around uh, Cisco security. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Karen. So uh, we made a major announcement this morning um, talking about an important product that in and of itself I think has a certain amount of value, but the reason why we've gotten a lot of attention is that it, it indicates an important new direction for Cisco security, and I think in general it reflects some significant changes in networking. Uh, as a whole, and that is the solution is called Cisco AnyConnect Secure Mobility, and it's really built around providing anytime, anywhere access on any device. And so we really believe that we're entering a world where the amount of enterprise computing that we do on our desktops and laptops and sort of traditional platforms is starting to actually give way to the computing that we use on our phones, you know, smartphones, tablets, mm -hmm. netbooks, these kind of hybrid devices that are increasingly occupying our attention and our time. And you know, really, I, I love thinking about the idea that a phone is becoming more like a computer. So great from a user standpoint, incredible productivity enhancement, but poses some significant security challenges. And so the, the solution that we've announced is called the Cisco AnyConnect Secure Mobility Solution that allows us to put a little software agent on every one of these devices. And you can think of this thing as a, you know, a little software shim. And its purpose in life is to make sure that every connection coming on or off a device gets pointed to a scanning element somewhere in the network. And that scanning element might be an appliance that you'd know and love from Cisco. It could be a module, a security module running out in the branch office routers <coughs> that Cisco produces. Or with our acquisition of ScanSafe, it could be an image running in one of Cisco's steadily growing cloud of security data centers. And so having the ability to deliver security in all of these different form factors allows us to put security in more physical places than we ever did before. And so in effect, what we're doing with this solution is we're moving security close to the end user, wherever that end user may be. And I think that's really one of the kind of unique aspects to it. It's not just about a bunch of features on a VPN client. It really is a new architectural approach to how we're going to deliver security. Security used to be in one box in one place, and now we're putting it in, integrated into the network in a thousand places. And that allows us to, to deal with this mobile, open, distributed internet. Um, Chris, you know, uh, one of the things that a lot of our customers have talked about is sort of the need towards, to moving towards network decentralization, which, which necessitates a solution like what we just talked about. You uh, perspective on that? Well, my perspective was shortened by my lack of attention span. I was actually using that, that uh, very solution to... Uh, <laughs> no, no, I can see what you're doing here. You're playing Pokemon <laughs> yeah. on there, so don't, right. don't, right. yeah. Apologies. don't pretend to be working. Uh, yeah, so, so that's a very interesting um, notion, too. Right? We've got the consumerization of IT happening where that those lines, as you referred to, are blurred between what is work, what is play, what is home, what is not, um, which has been driving a lot of... Um, a lot of the flexibility, agility, and collaboration elements of what we do um, to, to whole new levels. And then that security piece is very interesting because to the centralized, decentralized model, um, what, you know, as, as we see virtualization in the enterprises as well, extending to both in clients and smartphones and whatnot, but also pushing into cloud computing uh, mm -hmm. areas, um, your ability to connect from anywhere and to anywhere uh, means that in many cases, the services that you take for, uh, take, uh, for granted that are going to be available locally uh, as, as a piece of your network, uh, as, as is defined by enterprise boundaries, um, may or may not exist when you move in or outside of those, those, those traditional boundaries. So yeah. 
So I think uh, what we see is that in one case you see service providers offering uh, suites of services uh, that uh, will enable that capability, so mass centralization of applications, data, and security functions on one half. But then you see these platforms, uh, you know, there are something like 7 billion people on the planet, but 4 billion phones. Yeah. It's an amazing stat. Yeah. And so what's, what's happening now is we, we almost have, uh, we have micro networks and then personal area networks where things are becoming meshed on this side where I can communicate with your phone, you can communicate with mine. So, um, you know, the notion of distributed uh, versus recentralized, the answer is yes. Right? Yeah. We, we have a mixture of both. And yeah. so the need to secure those across any endpoint, any, any transit is, is, is critical. Yeah. You know, one of the drivers that I think is particularly interesting is the the adoption of business video. And I don't know if you remember, like when I was a kid, I used to see those ads from AT&T would have like you know this sort of the telephone of the future, and it had video, and it's like someday all phones will be like this, yeah. and you know we're gonna have helicopters in our driveways, and we all had jetpacks. Well, right. I never got my jetpack, and my helicopter, you know, hasn't really worked out. But the video phone thing, I actually think that's here, yeah. right? I mean, the, the, the sort of, and really the key thing for me was high def. Yeah. Like when the experience becomes as good from a fidelity standpoint as a live meeting, mm -hmm. that's really, really powerful. And I think the display technology and the you know, ability to capture video, move it around seamlessly, that's pretty much arrived. If, if you look at Cisco telepresence. Yeah, that's awesome. Know, yeah, that, and, and it's having a, a profound impact on the way I do business. Yep. I'm on a telepresence session 10 hours a week. And the only reason why it's not more than that is just availability on the other end, right? right? So as these things get cheaper and more pervasive, we're going to be pumping out business video at a, just an astounding rate. I saw a statistic that within Cisco, 65% of our network traffic is business video, mostly person-to-person wow. -person collaboration. And what I think it's really interesting is that as we start to interconnect these video conferencing systems with customers, you know, you're not going to be backhauling that traffic, right? You're not going to have these you know, sort of waves and waves of video that's going to be punching out of your branches into your head end, right. into the right. DMZ, right. back right. to somebody else's no. DMZ, back out to the branches, right? You gotta go branch to branch. And so so we need to be able to have a world that, that has more distributed internet access, which means more distributed security, right? right? Being able to put security in not two, three, or four locations, but Everywhere. 10, yep. 100, or 1,000 locations. Um, it's one of the big trends that we're gonna be talking about over the next five years. Yeah. Well, there's an intelligence associated with that too. I mean, today we have mixed media applications that otherwise, I mean, we're very good in security about talking about securing data, but yeah. it was really about information now, which, in yeah. which includes voice, video, and data. And so yeah. things like MediaNet, things like our approach to um, actually being much more um, specific about how you would think about securing not only data, but elements that are part of that entire package, that part of that user experience, becomes a, a set of problems that we haven't encountered before. I mean, we, you know, inter internally we trust things that when we place a call over over, over VoIP or yeah. uh, that, that it just, you know, nobody's uh, eavesdropping or that the video isn't being intercepted. But we see examples from, I, I would say the consumer world, but even the government world, where we, we saw the interception of video from uh, UAV drones, right? Yeah. It's so the, the notion here is that our ability and need to protect not just data, but, yeah. uh, but video and our phone is very important. Now, now Correct me if I'm wrong, but you are the VP and general manager of SCBU. Correct. Okay, so that whole video. And I'm also your boss's boss. Right. So, you know. Oh. <laughs> right. There. It's good you get my there, title there right. There is that point. Yeah. Um, <coughs> but along those lines, so you were talking about the video phones. I, I, I have a roadmap um, uh, request. Okay. So you're talking about how great it is in high def. Uh, so, so you, like, you're asking for a jetpack? No, no, we're close, working on that. Close, but it's, close. It's, it's because at 4 a.m. high def on a call to Korea or Japan, what I want is the Judy Jetson face thing that that, that <laughs> came down and front of that. <laughs> I consider that a security feature, really. Yes. Mostly to protect the poorness and children on the other end. It's a poor man's avatar. That's right. That's yeah. what I need. Yeah. I, I need. I need a second life, first life thing. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> I think is what I'm getting to. Yeah. So uh, ultimately. Um, I think we have an enormous uh, set of interesting challenges that, that from the perspective of, of, of how we think about security today in a distributed fashion, um, it just is wide open for, uh, for new and novel solutions, yeah. which I think we're, 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 we're on, uh, yeah. really down the path to developing. You know, th I think there's three major trends, and I don't know if I'm stepping over all the questions here. No, it's great. No, no, go, go with it. Um, I'll, I'll steal the mic from you in, in a moment, but okay. can we keep on talking? I just you know, want to say the viewers are... You know, Firing questions at us? They, they're, they're coming in, and we're also seeing uh, the number rise on viewers. Yeah, so like, it's an right. interesting discussion okay. that you're leading. Right. So go no for it. No more talk about jetpacks. No, we're going to stay focused on <laughs> 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 it. 